What is up everyone? Hoka One One Athlete and Coach Sage Canada here with an analysis video. We're going to talk about the top 10 mountain ultra trail running, mutt running performances of all time, in my opinion. And uh, before we get started, thank you so much for all the well wishes. Recovering still from uh, my bout with pneumonia, still trying to figure that out, that illness, but also my uh, injury issues that I'm rehabbing and there's going to be more on my personal vlog on that later. Stay tuned for that as well as future race plans for later this summer. Hope you're doing well. This analysis though uh, is an article that we actually posted on uh, a new business venture website, muttrunning.com. That stands for Mountain Ultra Trail, Mutt, M-U-T, Running. Uh, and we got actually social media as well to plug here. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, got a Facebook page. We also have a YouTube channel uh, with a recap video of the Canyons 100K. Check that out. It's a business venture. Uh, pro runner Matt Daniels and I originally started. We got our good friend Steven Ganoza on board doing all the video work uh, and as well as this website with a message board and we do some media coverage and analysis. But this is an article I posted recently on the boards um, or on the website, but also on the boards people had described it as uh, and you know this list and within the realm of mountain ultra trail running you have a huge diversity We're talking about vertical K short distance mountain running not even ultra marathons, right? This could be like 12k 7 miles 10k mountain running classic mountain running races It could be ultra marathons that could be a hundred miles or 24 hours It could be on a road. It could be on a track It could be a traditional single track trail type of event, right? So you've got the whole spectrum here. We don't just discriminate uh, with ultra distance races and we don't just discriminate with one surface, right? Uh, but what we don't cover is standard track and Olympic events and road marathons. That's, uh, you know, save that banter for let'srun.com. But check out the website. Uh, I got the article posted there. We're going to break it down. Now, as a disclaimer, I will say this was very hard to come up with. And, you know, it's like comparing apples to oranges, so to speak, with the diversity. And I think one poster on our message board actually said, like comparing uh, a whole fruit basket because the diversity is hard to equate. But like I say with any list, whether it's, you know, the toughest event in distance running or a top 10 hardest course list, you've got inevitable bias. You've got inevitable, it's, it's very subjective and opinion based. Because uh, unless you're comparing things directly, quantitatively, with numbers, you can't be totally objective. There's always going to be some element of bias. So it's all in good fun, so to speak. And you could disagree. Comment below with lists that you think, or performances you think should be on the list or not, uh, or change the order. And this is the women's list. This is the women's list. We're going to come out with a men's list in a bit. But uh, we got great feedback from pro ultra runner Hoka One One teammate Camille Heron, uh, who has who appeared on the list twice actually with two of her performances. But uh, you know it's all in good fun. Um, let's break it down. We took what one factor we really took into consideration was the race history. How many years a race has been going on? Uh, some some of these races have a 100 year history, so really long history definitely helps with the performance. Another factor we took into account was variable weather conditions on the year on the day. Who was racing? Who head to head, what the competition was, what the margin of victory was, uh, what the trail conditions may have been like on the day. Some courses change over time or they have a reroute or they're slightly different distances, especially with the trail races, uh, but even the, the road races like Comrades, as well as uh, the overall competitive depth. What was the field size? How many runners towed the starting line? How many pro runners were in the top 10? Uh, or how many, what was the density of the top 10, so to speak, because uh, it kind of tells how competitive things are. But break it down, the top 10 women's mutt running performances of all time, the most unbreakable record, so to speak, in our opinion. Number one on the list, number one on the list, Gerda Stein's up run at Comrades 558. Amazing time, first sub six hour on the up run at Comrades. Now Comrades is a historic race because there's about 20,000 runners that tow the starting line each year there now, and the race has a 100 year history. It's the ultimate of ultra marathons. Uh, it takes place in South Africa. Um, the net uphill up route has about 6,500 feet of climbing, 4,000 feet of downhill. It's all on pavement, uh, but you know, Gerda, amazing runner. I actually was in that race. She actually passed me with like 10 miles to go. Uh, so I got to see, and she was just flying like probably 5.30 per mile pace when she passed me around mile 48 or 47 or so. 
Uh, but you know, she's a 225 marathon runner, has the South African national record in the marathon. She's been 11th place at the New York City Marathon in 227. Just an amazing performance all around. But that up, up record at Comrades, uh, 558, that places you well overall. Uh, but first woman, she shattered. Uh, the women's existing uprun record with that performance. We consider that the number one performance. Number two, number two on the list, uh, Tomo Abe. I no, hope I didn't pronounce that name wrong. Uh, 100K world record, 633. 633 for 100K on a road. Uh, this happened in Japan at the historic Lake Saroma course and it ha comes with an asterisk a little bit in some regard and this is the reason we didn't put it number one on the list actually is because the start and finish line have a 47 percent separation of the total race distance so it's almost 50 percent which is the upper limit the IAAF places on uh, road courses marathons or ultra marathons to be legal so to speak for record purposes you also can't have a big net downhill but the reason they don't want the start and finish to be more than 50 percent of the total race distance so if it was a a road marathon you couldn't have the start and finish line be more than 13.1 miles apart from each other as the as the crow flies directly because they don't want you running in one direction point to point uh, if it was like 100% straight line, you could have a tailwind that whole way, right? So the more the course runs point to point from start to finish, the more you could benefit from a tailwind effect. Now on this day, uh, there was a chance that she did have some sort of tailwind and that it was at her back for a decent part of the race. And because of that, uh, it is the official world record, but some people don't think it's as quite as good of a performance maybe as uh, other performances. But 6.33 for 100K, I mean, that's just a ridiculous time. And it's not like uh, Abe was not a great phenomenal runner. She was a 2.26 marathon runner, right? If a guy had run 2.26 in the marathon and then ran a 6.33 100K, I don't think as many people would doubt it, uh, but it's still a really good conversion. 6.33 for 100K, totally legit. Uh, women's world record, that's why we rank that as number two all time on the performance list of mountain ultra trail running. Number three, number three on the list, Rory Bazio, UTMB, 22 hours, 37 minutes. This was on the standard Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc course. Uh, so the full length, 106 miles, 33,000 feet of climbing, 10,000 meters of climbing about. Rory, it was her second win there. She's won twice. A lot of people forget that Americans have actually won UTMB. American women, that is, right? And so Rory's won twice. Uh, her margin of victory was amazing that year. She blew out the whole women's field. Most women never come have come within two hours of that time, right? 22 hours at... Uh, UTMB, I mean, a lot of times, some years, Killian won in only 21 hours. Rory Bazio ran 22 hours at UTMB. Uh, just a phenomenal mountain performance. Uh, one of the greatest performances of all time and just demolishing the record on such a historic uh, course, such a historic line, a big, big spectacle event over uh, and starting and ending in Chamonix, France, of course, and going through Italy and Switzerland. So Rory Bazio, uh, just an amazing performance there. Number four. Number four on the list, Camille Heron's 24-hour uh, world record, world best of 167.8 miles or 270 kilometers. Now, the important thing about this, she did some events on the 400-meter track. She actually did this at the World Championships in France, though, uh, on a road course, and she covered this on a, it was a 1,500-meter loop, and she won by a landslide. She won by a landslide. She always has several records, uh, but she was representing Team USA. She led Team USA to victory, as well as was the individual world champion. Uh, and yeah, just 167 miles in, in 24 hours. Just an amazing performance uh, for a 24-hour event. Yes, it was on a, a flat surface, but that's what we celebrate in mountain ultra trail running uh, is the ultra long distances on flat surfaces, be it a road or a track. But that's number four on the list. Number five, number five on the li list, Maud Matisse, Maud Matthies, I'm pronouncing your name wrong, sorry. Course record at Sierra Zanol, 249.20. 
Uh, I actually ran Sierra Zell Zenal that year, and it was the year Killian set the men's course record. Not the coolest conditions. It was still on the warmer side, but dry conditions at Sierra Zenal. But she just absolutely shattered the record. And if you don't know, Sierra Zenal, uh, probably the, one of the most iconic mountain races in the world of all time. The race of five 4,000 meter peaks in Switzerland. Runs point to point, net uphill. 47 year old history thousands of people try to get in each year and run this historic race it's not an ultra it's not an ultra um but it's uh it's you know about 20 what did i say 21 miles uh in distance and uh it's one of those outlier performances mon matisse uh I mean, she also had shattered the course record of the Pikes Peak Marathon two weeks after this, running a 4.02, but she shattered the Sierra Zenal record by over five minutes, 2.49.20. Uh, previous record was 2.54.26 uh, by Anna Pich Petrovtova. I can't, sorry, these names, I'm not, I'm not good at pronouncing names. Uh, she was an Olympic marathon runner, and... Uh, you know, it is worth noting, Mon has tripped two positive PE tests, PED tests uh, that were underwater protocol she got warnings for in 2015. But uh, yeah, really an outlier performance there on an iconic mountain race. Number six, number six on the list, we have uh, Firth Van der Meer. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I should research how to pronounce these names a little bit better. You could read it there. Her run, Two Oceans, course record in three hours, 30 minutes, and 36 seconds. Three and a half hours at Two Oceans. Two Oceans is probably the second most competitive ultramarathon in the world behind Comrades. Also takes place in South Africa. Net uphill, 56 kilometer uh, race. I actually haven't done it, but I've been out by part of the course uh, near Cape Town, South Africa. It's got a 51 year old history. Uh, and you know thousands of runners take part in it super competitive a lot of road marathon runners in 1989 Firth set this mark and it's withstood the test of time um, her margin of victory that day was 33 minutes and she was a 227 marathon runner who also still has the course record the down record at the historic comrades ultra marathon but 330 for 56k on a big net uphill course uh in a record that was set in 1989 has never been broken uh even withstanding a lot of the greats in the last 10 years is just a really historic performance and amazing performance so that's number six on our list number seven number seven on the list kim dobson's pikes peak ascent uh 224 224 at pikes peak I actually ran that year at Pikes Peak as my first ascent, and she was coming up to pass me. If the race was another mile long, she probably would have passed me. I saw her finish right behind me that year. Um, Kim Dobson, already a legend in U.S. mountain running for net uphill courses. You know, she's won Mount Washington several times, but it was this performance at Pikes Peak in the ascent, 13 miles uphill from 7,000 feet to 14,000 feet, top of Pikes Peak, two hours, 24 minutes, she shattered the pre-existing uh, course record by women. And, you know, she's also won the Jungfrau Marathon uh, to just throw out some more performances from her. But she shattered the record by Lynn Bjorklund, uh, which was set in 1981, by over eight and a half minutes. Her margin of victory on the day was 13 minutes. And uh, no, woman, no woman ever since then or before then has come within eight minutes of that time, 224 at Pikes Peak. I remember she said, I did a lot of 14ers, did a lot of mountains all summer to get altitude trained for this. Just an amazing climber, uh, one for the record books. Number eight, number eight on the list, Camille Heron, again, her 100 mile, 160K world best on a road slash trail, 12 hours, 42 minutes, 12 hours, 42 minutes for 100 miles. She did this at Tunnel Hill. People call it a trail race. We know it runs a bit more like a crushed gravel towpath road in a lot of sections. So, you know, it is up in the air with uh, how it's determined trail versus road, but you call it an all surface record. It's an amazing time. Regardless, uh, you know, 12 hours for uh, 100 miles, 161 kilometers, uh, women's mark, that is really historic. That's an amazing performance. Uh, women have not come close to that in the history of mountain ultra trail running in the U.S. So uh, Camille is really leading the way with that amazing performance. Tunnel Hill, course record, world best of 100 miles. 
Number nine on the list, got some heat for this one, but uh, we think it's an amazing performance, is Des Linden, Desiree Linden's 50K world best 259.54 recently happened this year. She did it on a on a bike path out in Oregon. Yes, it was a you know it was a paced event. It was going after the world best. But if you know Desi, and you know I was former teammates with her at Hanson's Brooks. She's won Boston. She's a two-time Olympian in the marathon. Uh, she ran 222 at Boston one year. Her official IAAF certified PR in the marathon is 225. She's got amazing range. She's got amazing range, and it wasn't so much that she broke the pre-existing world best at 50K, which was set uh, by the IAU uh, championships, which are held most years. It's that she shattered the record and went sub three hours, right? It's uh, 548, 543 per mile pace for 31 miles. An amazing performance. No doubt she could probably run faster. We think that women's 50K world record could probably go down to closer to 255. But to run sub three for 50K, uh, just a really amazing performance. Strong performance by a very good marathon runner going out into their first ultra marathon. 50K on a fast surface, you know, it's an amazing performance. Number nine on the list. Number 10. Number 10 on the list, last one. Ruth Croft, course record at Les Templiers, seven hours, 27 minutes. Now this was a tough one, but Les Templiers has the history and Ruth Croft is an amazing runner. Les Templiers in France, Southern France, uh, ultimate trail running festival, 76 kilometers with about 3000 meters of climbing, long history of attracting international uh, competitive runners. In that race that year, she was going against Emily Forsberg, Ida Nielsen, Camille Heron, Adeline Roach, uh, to name a few. And she showed that diversity of blending speed and strength because this course is pretty fast the first half. Then it gets pretty mountainous and technical the second half. But she shattered the course record there in 2017 uh, in an amazing mark against a very competitive field against thousands of runners uh, in this history. I said it has a 26 year old history. Le Temple, a very classic event. So that rounds up our top 10 list. Honorable mentions. Uh, honorable mentions include Ann Trayson's Leadville course record, Deanna Finkel's Hard Rock 100 course record, and Ellie Greenwood's Western States 100 mile course record as well. What do you guys think though? Dispute this in the comments below. Better yet, go on our website, motrunning.com, discuss on the message board. Uh, where did we go wrong? What performances did we miss? What you think should be on the list or shouldn't be on the list, as well as our very biased and opinionated uh, ranking of this. And again, we know it's, it's very hard to compare mountain ultra trail running events to each other. This list is all in good fun. Get the discussion going, but that's our analysis on there. Stay tuned for the men's list, as well as give us a follow on uh, at Mutt Running, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, as well as our YouTube channel there and the website muttrunning.com. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you like this type of analysis. More to come on that, more personal vlogs, as well as training talks coming your way on this channel. Thanks to the Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. Thanks to the title sponsor, Hoka Onehone, keeping the dream alive. Hope you're doing well, and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.